So what we're going to do with this is transform the power series. So again, a Taylor polynomial was an estimation. It's like an equation of a tangent line, but instead of linear, it has a higher degree. Um, the power series means you take that out forever and ever, and it's going to you know, be the true function. If you go far enough, it's going to be what it actually is. I don't know why I wrote this on here. That's what we've been doing this whole unit. That's not like new information. You do the nth derivative over n factorial, and that gives you the coefficient, OK? So find the Maclaurin series for sine of x. We're going to need our derivatives. So first derivative would be what? Cosine x. And then second derivative would be negative sine of x. Third derivative would be negative cosine x. And I don't need to write any further than that because then the fourth derivative would be what? Sine of x and you've started back over again. Okay, so I am going to write these out. I guess if you want, you can. I do recommend that you do. If you don't want to, you can just watch, but I do it to stay organized. Because um, again, it's not really about intelligence or being smart. It's about keeping yourself organized. Yeah, I'm sorry. Part of it is that my hand is in the way. Let me zoom out a little bit. Here, I'll write one more. Plus dot, dot, dot forever and ever and ever and ever. So it's very much about just a pattern. If you want to sum up this last unit, that's it. Like that's really what we've been doing this whole unit. Oh, did I forget one? Oh, I'm sorry. See, I even wrote out the pattern and like missed something. There. Thank you. I got all the other ones. Now, the reason I wrote out so many of them is because like, hopefully, you know, this foreshadowing, some of them are gonna go away. So if you want like enough terms, cause usually what they'll say on the AP exam is like the problem will say, write out the first four non-zero terms. So you have to go quite far because every other one is gonna be zero, okay? So F of zero, zero, okay, so that one's gone. F prime of zero would be one. So we get one X to the first. And then second derivative at zero is zero. Like every other one is gonna go away. So fourth derivative at zero, that's back to the original. Oh, I'm sorry, I skipped one. Third derivative at zero, that's gonna be negative one over three factorial. And then x to the third. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and put the x to the third in the numerator. You can put it off to the side if you want. It doesn't really matter. Fourth derivative takes us back to the original function, so that's going to be zero. Fifth derivative would be the same as the first derivative, so that's one. So plus one over five factorial x to the fifth. And then I didn't write any more of the pattern, but say you were asked for the first four non-zero terms, because that's typically what they say. What would the next one be? Good, minus, because that's the part I always lose. I always forget about the fact that it's alternating. Minus, good, over factorial, perfect. Plus dot, dot, dot. Now we want to write the general form of this, and we're going to start n at zero for all of these. So we need to come up with you know, the general format that will give us that. So first of all, it's alternating. Let me take care of that first because otherwise I always forget about that. Part. It'll be negative one to the n or the n plus one. Let's think about this. If this, if this is our zero term, if we plug in zero, that's going to end up being positive. So that'll take care of that. It'll go positive. Like if this is our first term, if you plug in one, it'll end up being negative. Okay. And then we want x to the something over something factorial. And whatever that something is, it's gonna be the same thing. Cause see how we have X to the third over three factorial and X to the fifth over five factorial, et cetera, et cetera. What I'll sometimes do is off to the side. It, some people can just do this in their heads. Sometimes I can and sometimes I can't, but what I'll do is off to the side, I'm gonna write zero, one, two, three, cause this is the zero, one, two, three terms. And I want it to come out to be one, three, five, seven. 
And sometimes that just helps me figure out what the pattern is. Like if I write that off to the side, you can or not, but somehow you got to figure out what that is. So any thoughts? Like if you plug in zero, like this is the zeros term, you need to get one. And if you plug in one, you need to get three. If you plug in two, like, so I'll write that off to the side to like kind of help me see it, but we need to figure out what that pattern is. And it will be N. Yeah, so 2n plus 1, and then over 2n plus 1 factorial. Yeah. So that's why I usually write this off to the side. That helps me to find the pattern. So that's our first four non-zero terms and the general term. That's what they're going to write on the AP exam. Write out the first four non-zero terms and the general term. Now we've done that before, but like but we have been doing that this unit. Here's the new thing. Find the Maclaurin series for f of x equals sine of x squared. Well, we just did sine of x, right? This is like we're transforming that. Instead of x, you're gonna put x squared. Everywhere there's an x, you're gonna replace it with x squared. Do you remember composite functions back from algebra two? I know you're like, no, that was a million years ago. Do you remember f of g of x? like F gets hungry and eats G, it's like that, right? Everywhere there's an X, you're gonna input an X squared. So that would give us X squared minus, and then if you input an X squared, X squared to the third, get X to the sixth over three factorial, that's not gonna change, plus X to the what? Tenth good over five factorial minus x to the 14th, good, over seven factorial plus dot, dot, dot. And then again, we're gonna write the general form. Um, it's gonna be a lot the same as what we just did though. The alternating part's not gonna change that negative one to the n. And in the denominator, that two n plus one factorial, that's not changing, we didn't mess with those. All we need to do is change what this exponent turns out to be. So again, I'll usually just write off to the side, like we did the zero, one, two, three terms. So I'll write out like zero, one, two, three. And then what I want them to come out to be right next to it. Again, like this is just my suggestion. You don't have to do this. It's not like required, but we want it to be two, six, 10, 14. So like if you plug in zero, you want to get two. If you plug in one, you want to get six, so on and so forth. So like look at it and like, Multiply by four and then add two. So four n plus two. Yeah, if your brain works like that, mine just kind of does it. I like, yeah, and I'm sure like of the eight of us, we could think of it eight different ways. You know what I'm saying? I'm showing you like how my inner workings of my brain does it. Yours might be totally different. I'm interested how you think through it because you're very really like, Good about the patterns. So if you plug in zero, four times zero would be zero, plus two would give you two. If you plug in one, you would get six. If you plug in two, you would get 10. There, okay. We're gonna try that again. We're gonna find the um, series for cosine and then we're going to transform it. All right, so let's write out the derivatives. First derivative would be what? Negative sine. Second derivative would be negative cosine. And third derivative would be sine. Sorry, I kind of wrote that wrong there. Um, and then your fourth derivative would be cosine. So you don't need to write them out any further because they're gonna cycle every four. And again, I'm going to write out the pattern. Um, or actually, you know what? Maybe I don't have to for this one because I have it right above me in the um, in the problem one. I'm just going to look back at this one because I've got it already listed out right there. All right, so f of zero, cosine of zero would give you one. So that entire first term is one. And then the first derivative at zero, that one's gonna be 
zero. Good. So it's going to skip every other one. It's just the opposite of the one we just did. All right. Second derivative at zero be negative one. So that'll be negative one over two factorial. So negative one over two factorial and then x to the second, which I'm just going to go ahead and put in the numerator. And then third derivative is going to be zero. And then fourth derivative brings us back to the original function. So cosine of zero will be one. So it'll be positive x to the fourth over four factorial. And I didn't write it out any further up there in question one. But what's the next one going to be? Like once you get there, you should hopefully be able to continue that. Good, perfect. And then forever and ever and ever. And then we have to come up with the general form. They always say, write out the first four non-zero terms and the general term. We want to start it at zero. Oh, good. Negative one to the n. We need that first. Thank you. Because if I don't do that first, I always forget it. But to make it alternate, because I get so caught up with the other stuff that I sometimes forget to do that. So I would write out zero, one, two, three, because those are our zeros, one, two, and three terms. And we want it to come out to, this first one would be x to the nothing, and then two, four, six. So if you plug in zero, you should get zero. If you plug in one, you should get two. If you plug in two, you should get four. This one's a little bit easier. You're just doubling it, right? So it'll be x to the two n over two n factorial. And then this says, find the Maclaurin series for f of x equals cosine of absolute value, not absolute value, losing my mind, square root of x. So everywhere you see an x, you're going to replace it with square root of x. So the first term is just one. We're not going to change that. And if you plug in square root of x for x, what are you going to get here? Good, it'll just be x over two factorial because the square root and the square root are gonna cancel. All right, plus, and then what would the next one be if you plug in square root of x? Good, perfect. And then minus x cubed, oops, minus x cubed over six factorial plus forever and ever. And then we wanna write out the general format of that. Good, perfect, so you're on top of that. And then the denominator is not gonna change, right? It'll still be two n factorial. We're starting this at zero. I still have to do this for like my sanity. I, I like have to, I don't know why. Like I have to write that off to the side just so I can see it. Again, everyone's brain works differently, but yes, it'll just be x to the n. That's, that's your answer. So again, this is not new information. We've been doing that. We're just transforming them, that's all. All right, now we're gonna do e to the x. We don't have to write out first derivative, second derivative, third derivative, why not? They're all e to the x, e to the x is great, okay? So uh, e to the zero would be one over zero factorial and time x times x to the zero. That would all just be one plus, First derivative at zero would still be one. Over one factorial would still be one and then x to the one. Plus the second derivative at zero would still be one over two factorial x to the second. Yeah, and you're right, but you kind of don't want to reduce these ones because it's easier to come up with the general form if it's not simplified. Like you just want to leave it as two factorial. So what would the next one be? Good, and then x to the fourth over four factorial and so on and so forth. And then we're going to do the general term. So it's not alternating, we don't have to worry about that. This one's actually pretty simple. It'll be x to the, yeah, x to the n 
over n factorial. E is great. It's the best one. It's its own derivative. So that ends up being really simple. So number six, use a power series to approximate that integral with an error less than 0 0.01. You would need a calculator to deal with the decimals. If you just want to pull out your phone, like we don't need to type in anything real complicated, but we will have some decimals here. So like I didn't have a calculator. You guys will have to help me out. Okay. So the first thing is you have to have this, the e to the x. And to transform it, we're going to plug in the negative x squared. So everywhere there's an x, we're going to put a negative x squared. Are you following me there? OK. Everywhere there's an x, we're going to put a negative x squared. So it'll be 1 and then minus x squared. And then plus, now if you plug in a negative x squared, squared, that'll be what? It'll still be positive, but it will be x to the fourth, but why will it still be positive? Even good. So x to the fourth over two factorial. Oh, now this one will be negative. It's gonna do every other one. So if you plug in negative x squared right here, It'll give you negative x to the sixth, good, over three factorial. And then the next one will be x to the eighth over four factorial. Let me do one more, because actually I can't remember how far we have to go to get this error. Good, do you guys see how like, once you get like it going, you can kind of keep it going? I forget how far we need to go. I think that should be good enough though. All right, so we want to integrate that. So we're gonna do the integral from zero to one of that. So it's an antiderivative. So antiderivative of one, it's been a while since we've done an antiderivative. This will be good practice. It's good review for the AP exam. Antiderivative of just one, good X minus One third x cubed, good, it's coming back to us. This might be slow going at first, but we'll get there. Plus, now you'd want it to be one fifth x to the fifth, but then you'd have to times that by one half. So it would be one tenth x to the fifth minus, now you'd want that to be a one seventh x to the seventh, but there's a three factorial there, which is six. Forty-two, good. Because you'd have a one seventh, but there's a one sixth there already. Are right, probably going to start needing a calculator here for the next one. All right. Plus, you would want this to be one ninth x to the ninth, but there's one over four factorial there. Four factorial is twenty-four, so you'd have to do twenty-four times nine. If you don't know that one off the top of your head, fine. That's why I said grab it. Two sixteen. And then minus. Now that would be one eleventh x to the eleventh. You'd have to do 11 times five factorial, which is 120. So 11 times 120, please. Okay, I don't think we're gonna need to go that far to get the error to be 0 0.01, but we'll see what happens. Oh, such that zero to one. So you do upper boundary minus lower boundary, but if you plug in zero for all those, it's just gonna give you zero. So essentially you just need to plug in one to all of those. And we want our error to be less than this. Your error is less than the n plus once term. Do you guys remember this? Like it's all like that's the big takeaways. It's always the next one. So let's see how far we need to go in order for that to happen. So if we plug in one, we're not there. Okay, obviously. Minus a third, a third is not smaller than this. Okay. Plus a tenth. A tenth would be 0.1 which is not smaller than this. So we need to, do you guys get how I'm saying we need to keep going? We're not there yet. All right, minus one over 42. Can you type in one divided by 42? Let's see what that decimal is, if it's small enough. Is 0 0.02, are we there? No, keep going. Plus one, oh wait, that wasn't 219. That was 216, wasn't it? 216, I'm sorry. Dyslexia moment. All right, plus one over 216. I think that we're probably there at that point. Can you do one divided by 216? Point zero zero at anything? Okay, 
So that's our error. That's the n plus once term. So this is our answer. Remember, the next term needs to be smaller than that. So whatever that would be as a decimal would be our answer. You keep going until the n plus one term would be less than that error. All right, and then last one. Given this series and this general term, find an expression for f of x. What you wanna do is compare this to some of the ones that we already did and see how it got transformed. Instead of me asking you to transform it, it's already transformed. And I'm sort of asking what the transformation is. So it's alternating. It's gonna be one of those trig ones. And we have the odd factorials. So which one over here had the odd factorials? Sign. So look, here's your sine series, your series that represent your power series that represents sine of X. What did we do to this? to turn it into this. What do we multiply each term by? Oh, I'm not even asking for it to be that complicated. Just like this first, you guys are going above and beyond it. The first term was X, now it's X cubed. What did we multiply by? squared, good. So it's x squared times sine of x. We took the sine function and we multiplied every term by x squared. So here's the deal. I, I photocopied this out of the textbook that you guys took home and have never opened. Okay, but you have, it's there. You're gonna have to choose what you let go, but I would say it would be a good idea to have a few of these in your back pocket. If nothing else, I would know e to the x, sine of x, and cosine of x. If nothing else, just know them, just memorize them. Then, like as a secondary, I would say ln of x would be good to know, and arc tangent, that one can show up too, okay? I can't make you memorize them. It's sort of like the balls in your court. You can always find them, like you know how we found this and then transformed it, but the AP exam is timed. And if you just need to do something real quick, if you just know it, it'll be fast. Is this making sense? Okay. Because I know that's like more memorization is the last thing that you want to hear, but I'm just, I'm, I'm presenting it to you and you can do with it what you will. Okay.